Well, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Allison Verbanek, and I am the Public Program Specialist at the Peel Art Gallery Museum and Archive, located in downtown Brampton in Canada, because not everybody's from Canada right now. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to join us for our artist talk today, featuring the photographers from One Night Stirred at Sea, Contemporary Caribbean Art, presented in partnership with Black Artists Network in Dialogue. Before we get started, I would like to take a moment to make a traditional land acknowledgement. Since this program is being held virtually, a singular land acknowledgement does not capture the richness of our distribution across many locations from which we have attendees and speakers joining us today. As PAMA is part of the region of Peel, I will share the acknowledgement that is used for the region and invite everyone to consider their own position with regards to the land on which they find themselves. The land on which we gather and on which the region of Peel operates is part of the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit. For thousands of years, Indigenous peoples inhabited and cared for this land. In particular, we acknowledge the territory of the Anishinaabe, the Huron-Wendat, the Haudenosaunee, and the Ojibwa-Chippewa peoples. The land that is home to the Métis, and most recently, the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, who are direct descendants of the Mississaugas of the Credit. We are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land, and by doing so, give our respect to its first inhabitants. While we are sorry that the current lockdown in Peel prevents this exhibition from being explored in person, we do look forward to reopening when deemed safe to do so. If you haven't already, I encourage you to explore the exhibition virtually for an opportunity to appreciate the immense talent of this group of artists. We're excited that a 360 degree tour of the exhibition will be added to the virtual presentation within the coming weeks, so please be sure to keep an eye out for that. Today's talk will focus on the four photographers from the exhibition, Van Lee Burke, Christina Leslie, Janice Reed, and Storm Salter. The artists will take their time to explain the ind their individual practices and influences. They will discuss the ways in which their imagery is influenced and speaks to their connection with the Caribbean, the history of place, and ideas around the construction of identity. Today's talk will be recorded and will be made available through BAM's social media within the coming weeks. Tomorrow, registration will open for the second set of artist talks scheduled on January 28th of 2021, which will feature the exhibition's painting and textile artists. And we would love to see you back for that one. With that, it is my absolute pleasure to hand you over to the exhibition's co-curator, Greg Manuel, who will be moderating today's discussion. Thanks, Allison. Um, and a special thank you to Pama for uh, hosting the exhibition and um, facilitating. Um, thank you all for joining us. Uh, we have an amazing group of artists and uh, speakers here today. Um, to begin, I wanted to speak a little bit about the exhibition itself and how it came to be. Um, we, it's a very exciting exhibition that came out of uh, an art fair that was um, mounted and created by uh, uh, Karen Carter of Band Gallery, the director of Band Gallery. Uh, we mounted this exhibition in January of this year, uh, the end of January, beginning of February, and uh, which and now seems almost uh, just insane to think about, given given where we're at now. Um, you know, a few months later, we went into lockdown, and we've been in lockdown ever since. But um, during the uh, planning for the exhibition, Karen was in talks with Pema and uh, started to um, plan an exhibition that would take place uh, at Pama that you're, you're seeing, or you, you, know, you would be seeing if we were in that space now. Um, the art fair itself was created in order, in the hopes that we could start to bring attention and dialogue uh, and create dialogue for artists uh, and those in the arts working in the Caribbean, the larger Caribbean. This, the, the fair itself took place in Jamaica but of course uh, there are over 26 countries in the Caribbean. So we uh, plan to continue uh, that sort of exploration and every two years. So in 2022, January of 2022 will be the next uh, Sea Art Fair. Uh, we had curators from around the world, a couple of whom are joining us today on the talk. Uh, and we were able to begin sort of the, the um, 
dialogue with some of the artists and curators uh, in that region and hope to kind of, again, just expand and really build on that. Um, so we're really happy that, you know, uh, almost a year later, the work uh, that some of the work that we showed there and some of the artists that were shown in Jamaica are now on the walls uh, at the PLR Keller Museum and Archives um, in the show, When Night Started See, Contemporary Caribbean Art. So today we're going to be speaking to the photographers uh, in that show. Uh, the, all of the photographers featured in the current exhibition were either part of um, through ex exhibiting or as you're seeing now, Saul Leiter, uh, sorry, Storm Salter gave a talk, uh, who's a filmmaker from Jamaica, gave a, speak, gave a talk uh, as part of the programming for the art fair. Um, so we now have his work up on the wall and in uh, Peel, uh, along with the other four artists. And I will um, introduce them now. Uh, we have with us today, Christina Leslie, uh, joining us from Toronto. Um, much of Christina's practice uh, revolves around themes of identity, immigration, issues of marginalization, memory, race, and her West Indian heritage. Um, also joining us from Brampton is Janice Reed, a Canadian artist, um, a photographer, a portrait photographer, and, and whose work really in, um, looks, examines the intersection of uh, portraiture and fashion um, and the Black subject. Um, Storm Salter is a uh, writer, director, cinematographer, uh, and visual artist from Jamaica. Um, you may know his, uh, his, his mainly known as a filmmaker. His work, um, his feature film, Better Must Come, from 2013, uh, was hailed as, uh, by critics as one of the, the new movement of independent filmmaking through the Caribbean. Um, he's a co-founder of the New Caribbean Cinema Film Collective. Um, and we're featuring photographs in this exhibition that uh, I think haven't, have, it's the first time some of them have been seen uh, in this form. Um, as well, we have Ben Lee Burke, um, the godfather of black British photography, who's been working for the last 40 years in, um, in the UK, documenting uh, the black British experience. Um, joining us also on the talk are three uh, special commentators. Um, Marlene Smith, a British artist and curator, whose practice uh, extends research, writing, and curating, um, an, an associate artist at Modern Art Ox and associate at Making Histories Visible, um, which is an archive set up by um, Lubena Himid, I believe I'm saying that right, at the University of Central Lancashire. Uh, Paul Roth is the director of Ryerson Image Center in Toronto, previously senior curator of photography and media arts at the Corcoran Gallery of Washington, um, and Julie Crooks, the new curator of Global Africa and the Diaspora, uh, Arts of Global Africa and the Diaspora, um, and formerly the uh, Associate Curator of Photography at the AGO. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to, I think, start, what I'm hoping will happen today and what the plan is today is that each of the art will, will introduce themselves and give us a little bit of, of insight into their practice, into their current projects and speak a little bit about how their work has been informed uh, by the, their uh, relationship and connection to the Caribbean. And I am just going to randomly um, ask if Christina Leslie would like to start and uh, maybe give us a, some insight into you and how things are. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Um, everyone who's decided to join us this afternoon and thank you to Pamela and Greg and Karen and the whole team um, for putting this together. Um, so the series that's particularly that's actually featured in this exhibit is um, um, it's it derives from my, my father's hometown of Moore Bay in Jamaica. Um, the series kind of concentrates on the whole landscape of that town and photographing the community. Um, it, yeah, <laughs> I'm a little nervous today. I don't know why, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no worries, no worries. I'm, I'm curious, Christina, you're, this, this is a very specific project about it, a very specific place. You also, um, I know a lot of your work involves portraiture and, and explorations of the Caribbean community or, or in your community uh, in particular. Um, maybe you can just sort of talk about how that, how those, how this project fits into your broader, broader um, practice. 
Well, for me, I'm really, it's really important for me to do work that kind of talks about representation and inclusivity. Um, but I also focus a lot on my Jamaican heritage. Uh, this, if, if anyone's kind of familiar with my previous work, you would know it from my Every Teen Irie series um, that kind of is concentrating on these stories of people who've migrated here from Jamaica and kind of understanding that whole experience. And this is kind of like, I don't want to say a part two, but it's kind of a continuation of that journey where I've actually physically gone to my father's hometown and really try to capture landscapes, um, landmarks, uh, and places that were really important to him that he's talked about um, when I was a child. And so it's almost like a love letter to my father in a way without it being one. Um, but, and, and I think more at Bay, if you're kind of familiar with it geographically in the history, you know, it's the site of um, the 1865 Mort Bay um, Rebellion. And, you know, it's, it has hit nor historical significance to the island of Jamaica. And so I think in the broader sense of how it connects to my art practice, I'm always thinking about memory, family, um, Jamaica as a whole, but then also thinking about history and how they all connect um, in, my, in my whole practice. And this series, I think, is probably just a good uh, continuation of that. This, this series is, is interesting for me because it, it seems like for you, in, the, in the broader scheme of your practice, it's a very focused and very um, kind of uh, analog and I want to say minimal almost approach to, to documenting that. Because I know that in projects you've used a lot more um, photographic manipulation and, and or, or things like that and, and text um, color this seems like a kind of pared down um, group or body of work is that is that um, fair to say? Yes I mean well I think what's important I think when you think about the island of Jamaica it's so we think of images that kind of perpetuates the stereotype of like you know the Rasta man like Bob Marley color, and, and which is all great and fine, but I think um, for me, I really wanted to focus on documenting the area, like how we've seen documentary photography, the history of documentary photography, um, the same way we've seen like um, the FSA uh, uh, photograph, you know, landscape, um, you know, Robert Frank, Walker Evans, the same, the same thing. I think it's very important to show not just the black diaspora with color, but also show the black diaspora in, in the same vein as contemporary do documentary photography, if that makes sense. Like, and I really kind of wanted to remove all those, you know, recognizable signifier and really have you kind of hone into each image. And I think putting, presenting it in black and white kind of really does that. And I think it allows the viewer to really connect to the piece without having to think about all those other cultural signif signifiers that were so, you know, we understand are largely associated with the Caribbean and the island of Jamaica. Amazing, thank you. Um, maybe this may is a good is a good time to jump over to um, Van Lee um, Van Lee Burke in the UK if you could introduce yourself and talk about maybe in response, but but your your. Uh, practice, body of work, and uh, how it, um, it relates. Hi, good evening, and thanks for the invitation. Um, once again, um, this uh, transatlantic um, uh, communication, quite enjoying it. Um, yeah, my practice, uh, I'm a photographer. Basically, I document the lives and experience of African Caribbean people um, as they struggle to establish themselves um, within the British Midlands, um, in particular in Birmingham, although I've worked in various other cities around the country and abroad. I, um, at, at a pretty early age, I was quite, um, well, my interest in photography was brought about by having been given a camera by, by my, my mother while I was, you know, while I was still living in Jamaica. And when I came here and met many of the people who I'd heard so much about while I was still living in Jamaica, um, at some point during, um, you know, my development in photography, I thought admiring the two, I felt it was quite important 
um, based on what I saw reflected in the public press, uh, that I should respond. And I felt that we as a people owe it to ourselves to write our own history. And I would take, and I, I took it over myself, if you like, to, to start that um, by documenting um, our lives and experience. And the idea was to uh, pretty well bracket, you know, the work that I do between life and death, um, birth and death. Um, and I sort of set about that. But I felt also that material which I couldn't uh, take, photographs which, which were no longer available to me because of uh, times past, if I'm looking at the Windrush generation and using that as a landmark, I thought what I would do is to collect ephemera related to that experience. So I also have uh, a collection of material um, which is housed in an archive in um, Birmingham, the Library of Birmingham, and my flat here is quite full. Um, we are working on an idea, not too dissimilar to the Schoberg at the moment, to house the archive um, and um, other material. Um, and at the risk, I, 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 I do a best about this, well, I say, I, I dabble in other material. Um, in a bit of sculpting and using found material, I have an allotment um, and I do a little bit of mess about with some paint and a lot of collages as well, some of which are in public spaces. Um, at the risk of taking too much time, that's roughly me. Yeah, that's great. I'm, I'm curious based on, on some of the comments that Christina made about um, your choice of photography and particularly black and white is documentary photography. I mean, your, Christina's project in this exhibition and your, your, your body of work kind of work well together because they are both in black and white and they are both about documenting a specific place and a specific kind of, um, in your case, a much longer period of time. Was the choice of black and white always something that you stuck with or have you, have you also moved into different um, uh, films and, and color work? Um, I have over the years used the odd, um, well, perhaps more than the odd, taken some color photographs, but I've really exhibited color photographs. Um, black and white has always been my, my passion, and I've, I feel it works well. It, it offers, if you like, a, a wonderful graphic uh, um, approach to this subject that's been photographed without too much um, color. I think somehow we, we, we you know, we can, not always it can be done. Um, we can be too drawn into the, the colors, looking at the surface of the photograph. And I think that the black and white somehow gives much more than that. Um, yes, I've used other material, but primarily black and white. Right, right, thank you. Um, Janice, I hope you don't mind, but I'd like to jump over to you now and maybe just hear again. It, it, your, your practice is very different in that it, it, it is based a lot, a lot of it is color. Of, I don't know if it's all color, but there's, there's a, a focus on color, a focus on fashion, a focus on the body. Um, and maybe you can talk about where that came from and how, you know, just explain a little bit about your practice. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, you're right in the observation regarding to my work um, that I deal with mostly with color. <laughs> but um, it is uh, a lot of portraitures that I do, um, a lot of shin portraitures. Um, I have the opportunity to um, work with some great people recently, and uh, I just hopefully that it continues um, with the path and the trajectory that I'm on when it comes down to my work. Um, the work that is shown is um, real love, and um, I worked with a model by the name of Justine, who we've grown very close and become great friends. Um, and it was shot in a course of three different series. Um, the last series shown at PAMA, and um, I believe it's five images. Um, and uh, yeah, it's with that particular series, and I wish that I, I will speak more about it. I would like to explore more within the themes of Afro-feministic work, um, doing more, continuing um, real love and um, shooting different women and carrying on that type of conversation, especially when it comes down to ancestry. I know that um, with the across the diaspora, 
we are longing to find a place called home, but it's not actually even, I wouldn't consider it as something that is negative because when people look at the images of Justine, I like to hear that they, it looks like someone within their family. So we, it also being from the diaspora, it shows the connection that we all have um, amongst each other. It doesn't matter where we end up landing um, in the end. Um, being able to attend CART um, in February has brought blessings on blessings. Uh, um, not a lot of people have the currency or the, um, I guess, the chance to go back and, and revisit a place that they call home. I don't think, I think that a lot of us um, that are able to make the journey and go back home, we take that for granted. We don't really know. Um, we don't really notice. Um, yeah, I really just enjoyed being with um, my people from Redlands, um, being able to walk the road and people looking at my face and noticing like where I'm from, whose family like I come from. Like I think that um, being able to document and also having the chance to know where you belong, right, um, is also special. And I wish to continue that within my work and exploring those themes more with creation of real love. Thank you, thank you. Um, Storm Salter, uh, I think it's it, interesting uh, to follow Janice in that you are someone who has, has um, stayed or, or at least gone back to Jamaica uh, and, and found success there. And maybe you can talk a little bit about that process and uh, again, your, your practice in general. Uh, greetings everybody. Um, thanks for tuning in and um, Thanks, um, everybody at PAMA. Um, so the thing about Jamaica is that I found that Jamaica has actually been like super intrinsic, not just, it's not just that I'm, I'm documenting Jamaican spaces or people or writing stories here. A lot of the connections I've made, uh, opportunities that I've gotten have been in Jamaica you know, some of the biggest links and some of the biggest, you know, little things have happened because Jamaica is a source of inspiration for so many artists, whether it's music, fashion, you know, hipsters, whatever you want to call it. There's always people coming here to shoot music videos. There's always people recording albums here. Um, you know, for example, like I, I, I've done some work with Arcade Fire and um, it's kind of random, like Arcade Fire, how that happened, right? I met them in Jamaica, you know, at a party and we had a vibe. And when I went to Canada, I linked them again and we ended up working together. So, um, so, so, so Jamaica has played a big role in all of that. And in terms of, you know, my practice, obviously I'm a filmmaker as well. I, I, I got to filmmaking through the visuals. Like I was first into taking pictures, um, I, my understanding of like composition and my, me striving to be able to tell a story in a single frame you know, my work in film has kind of been, that was my jump off point. And, uh, but I've always been making art and other types of work, uh, but I found that it takes so much effort to make movies and to like make your story the best version of itself that it's kind of rewired my brain into this kind of slightly linear or just thinking about how to be very clear with my story. And I basically kind of look back at my 20 year archive of work with this kind of very newly wired way of processing story. And I picked images from professional work like portraiture of artists or athletes or journalism stuff um, with textural stuff. I, I photograph a lot of signage, um, architectural stuff, etc. And I just kind of pulled images from different cameras, different years, different countries. And I kind of found themes that were running through a lot of these images. So it, they're, they're images that work together visually. They're kind of images that could stand on their own. But when you place them together, like a storyboard is how I kind of think about it. It feels like you're telling the story. It feels like you're either at the beginning of a story, you're in the middle of a story somewhere, 
but there's a story happening in one direction or the other. And I try to make, so it might look like triptychs and diptychs, and there's going to be some that are even more, but beyond that, I'm thinking of them very much in a storyboard kind of um, approach. And also, you know, these are like my memories, you know, a lot of these images were just taken on the fly, you know, so I'm kind of like repurposing actual memories, giving work new meaning, um, and trying to create like a hybrid kind of storytelling, I guess. It, it, it sounds like it's very much, I mean, you, it's very much about the narrative, but it also, it's interesting when we, when we sort of unwrapped these works, um, it was clear, it's clear, well, it's interesting that they're yours because they are, they are narrative. They are sort of, they, you're a filmmaker and they do, they do relate to that. They tell a story, but I find it, I found it really interesting that you're pulling, as you just explained, pulling images from different, different stories and creating new ones. And I think um, uh, that's a, it's a, it's really cool to be able to see that and, and not necessarily see the connection, the original, you know, the, the original meaning of each image sort of falls off and the new one is sort of overlaid. And I think that's very, uh, yeah. an interesting way of, of retelling of the stories that are already there. Yeah, I feel like it re changes meaning in a way, you know, and, um, and that's what's interesting to play with. And a lot of, sometimes it's just, I just run into it sometimes. I spend a lot of hours putting images together, finding stuff on old phones. And then sometimes when you, especially when you blow up the images, you can see that they're shot on different devices. Some are very grainy from old Blackberries or old iPhones. Some are professionally shot. And, I, and that also gives it to me another level of something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's, it's, it's interesting to me that every, I mean, I, it's not surprising, but narrative is always a, a very strong force in, in, it seems to be a very strong force. There's a very strong force in a lot of artwork and, and I often in, in photography in particular. Um, Marlene, I'm, I'm going to, pull you in and I'm wondering if if that is is something that you can speak to or want to speak to in the work of, of Ben Lee that is the sort of continual narrative of the story that that has been told by his work and his images or maybe you have something else completely different <laughs> thanks Greg um I think it's really it's really interesting for me it's always interesting for me to hear Van Lee speak about his own work um and his work is often associated with documentary and that's a kind of very strong kind of theme that comes out. And I think that's a num there are a number of reasons for that. One is that his work has kind of um, in some ways focused on a particular neighborhood, on a neighborhood that he has a very close association with. And, and um, it's, a, it's a neighborhood that I also have associated with because it's the place that I was born. So in terms of thinking about diaspora, Van Lee's work has started in a particular neighborhood in Birmingham where there was a, where there was a, a, a sizable Caribbean and a particularly sizable Jamaican community. Um, and because he's been, because he's photographed and re-photographed not only those spaces, but some of those people again and again, you know, there's this very strong narrative of as he says, from, from birth to death. But for me, as a, as both as an artist and as a curator, there are other aspects of Van work that I'm also intrigued by. I'm intrigued by his artistry. I'm intrigued by why this particular documentary photographer's work has uh, a certain kind of resonance to it um, and has a depth to it and has a, um, you know, has a kind of attraction to it. Um, above and beyond some other documentary photographers. So I'm kind of interested to, to and I have been interested to examine why that is. Um, and I'm also just interested in what I, what I think of, of, of his artistry in terms of, and I think for me that comes down often to composition. So- um, Do you want to pull up the-, the, the Yeah, let, let's, just, okay. let's just have a look at this particular image. And this is an image that is, um, that that both is uh, associated with Van Lee's practice in in the 1970s, but it's also an image that that you might easily find if you were kind of just to Google Black Britain. It's a kind of image that you would find floating around 
um, sometimes unattributed. And, you know, Vanley has a, a vast array of images that, that fit into that category. So you kind of say, what's going on, Black Britain, and you, and up comes Vanley Burke's images. But I think one of the things that I, that I really love about not only this image, but this body of work, which is, is 1970s Vanley Burke, is there's something about the relationship between the photographer and the subject. And for me, although this, all this, though this work is called documentary, there's clearly a playing around with posing, lighting, uh, there's a play that's going on. For, so for me, this is like, this is more like studio photography in the street rather than, you know, this is not, I saw this guy and I quickly caught a snap of him. There's a play, there's a dance going on between the photographer and the subject. And that is one of the reasons I think why we love Vanley's work because, you know, the contact between us and the subject is, is, is so much there and it's so, so beautifully framed. I mean, I, I mean, I always, um, paraf I always um, um, confess before I talk about art, that, you know, what my actual relationship with the work is. So I'm not at all subjective here, Greg. Um, you know, <laughs> I know this park, I know that chopper bike, you know, I, so it, it feels very familiar to me. So I, I, you know, so I feel able on another level to, to, to talk about it. Um, and I think one of the things that I think is interesting with Vanley's relationship with this particular generation, which is my generation, um, is also something about him being of the Jamaican diaspora, born in Jamaica and come to the UK, um, introducing himself to this, this generation of, um, of UK Brits that, you know, he's a sort of, older brother of uh, mm. and so there's a, there's an interesting relationship there already before he approaches those sub these subjects um, and so it, when you look at his work from the 1970s to I'd say maybe early to mid 80s there is this um, there's a kind of knowing in the photographer which is um, which you see reproduced in his subjects um, so that's the first thing I want to say. The second thing I suppose I want to say, which is slightly to contradict what's already been said about Vanley's work, is that in his, um, you, there are certain moments where he does venture into colour. Um, and there are two, and, and for me, there are two, there are two, two particular instances come to mind. One is, uh, a particular shot that of his that he made in a um, West African, I think it was Sierra Leone, West African yeah. um, um, yeah, Gambia. marketplace. Zam sorry, Gambia, Gambia. Yeah. Sorry, um, where we we encounter a, a barber shop, a, a, a street side barber shop, and and it's another flag image. So this this flag image is a young man draped in a in a in a flag and the the flag is there to protect his clothing as he's having his hair cut and the collar just works there you know perhaps it's because it's the american flag um and the second thing i want to say is that um as well as the photography work that van has been doing there's the collage work and i think what's interesting for me again in considering his practice is that the I've seen Vanley at work where he literally is, it's like, you know, one of those gunslingers where he's walking the streets and his eagle eye is looking for, for what he wants to, to, to create. And what he does is he comp his composition is in his eye. And then he kind of quickly, very quickly, he's taking his shot. And he will often discard that. He will know immediately whether he's got something or not and he will discard the shot. But then there's this other considered part of his other other considered part of his practice where he's looking at those resources a little bit like Storm was talking about his own practice where he's looking back over all of this material and then bringing them together in the collage work, which is relatively recent um, 
Um, and some of these collages that Vanley has made, you know, will have, he'll have spent years painstakingly bringing together different images, tiny little bits of images, texts, you know, and a, a real kind of rich textural um, um, recomposition of, of those existing images. Um, but yeah, I could go on and on and on about that. This but is, I'm this really is this is, this is what I wanted. This is amazing because this is what I, I, I think it's really important to acknowledge that there, that each of the artists in this show, there's a, it's a very small body of work that you're seeing. Um, and that should prove your point. And I know, I know also, I mean, Christina, we, we spoke about it a little bit earlier, but I know Christina's practice has a, has a lot. There's a, well, everyone says, but there's a lot of different collage things come to mind because of the building and the, the imagery and the text and everything that you've done with a lot of your other work. Um, thank you, Molly. Uh, Julie, I'm wondering if we can um, uh, pull you in to, to speak a little bit. I'm, I'm curious to, uh, uh, on two things. One, I know you've, you've um, there's a very special project at the, at the AGO and a, a new collection that, that you um, sort of masterminded collecting or, or acquiring uh, the Montgomery collection, which is one of the largest, I think it is the largest, you'll, you'll, you'll correct me, but the largest collection of, of um, Caribbean uh, I think it's vernacular photography, but, uh, and I'm wondering if there's a, these are all very contemporary photographers, obviously. Um, though, is there a, what is the history? Is there a history of, of photography in the Caribbean? And is that something that you can kind of bring to us a little bit? Uh, well, thank you for having me. I'm really pleased to feel as if this is a little bit of a reunion. Of, I know, it's nice to see everybody uh, again. Looking at those photographs and feeling so nostalgic, although it was just like last year. Um, <laughs> so much has happened between, you know, then and now. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, the Montgomery collection really, um, for those who don't know, it's a trove of, of uh, photographs of about uh, 3,500 um, photographs of the Caribbean and Circum Caribbean um, just after emancipation. So around 18, well, emancipation is 1838, but um, the collection is going from about 1840 to 1940, so about 100 years. Um, and it's really kind of documenting, so interesting, uh, talking a lot about documentary photography because it's, um, it's certainly documentary witnessing through the lens of uh, mainly uh, European photographers um, who are kind of constructing uh, an image of the Caribbean at that time, right? So it's a kind of a, a, a visual economy, right? Uh, so, um, and those photographs, what is revealed um, are a lot about labor, right? You know, it's, it's you know, it's, People are emancipated, but are they really? You know, they're still tied to a plantation economy. Um, they're still tied to labor and servitude, uh, uh, extraction, um, all for the benefit of, you know, um, uh, Western countries and revenue and or the, the kind of planter, planter class that continues. Um, so it's been fascinating to kind of go through that uh, archive with that, um, with all of the kind of complications uh, of, of that history. Um, but what is interesting, uh, I think, is the kind of contemporary, the bridge to the modern and the contemporary, that um, contemporary photographers take up some of these themes, um, but are kind of reclaiming and reimagining Right, um, so there isn't a kind of, of uh, didactic tie to the subject matter or to the region. Um, they're really playing with, with the medium, right? Uh, so if you think uh, about the, you know, the first daguerreotype comes to Jamaica in 1841, um, and then you draw a line from 1841 to now. Um, and the myriad ways that you see the development of the camera, but you also see the development of uh, photography, like histories and practices. Um, so it's kind of a, a difficult question because it's so, like the Caribbean itself, it's so complicated. But what you do see, I, I, I really 
um, I'm excited by the work of uh, the artists in this exhibition because you see that um, uh, the variety and the range of photographic practices. Um, and then outside, you know, in kind of the, the wider con contemporary world, um, everyone from Ebony Patterson uh, to Nadia Huggins, uh, who's using a like, kind of underwater camera technology to create these beautiful poetic um, photographs. Uh, she's, she's also a filmmaker. So that kind of intersection, similar to what Storm uh, is doing. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, kind of, I don't want to say straight documentary, but, you know, uh, photographers who are kind of dedicated to um, the documentary genre, um, but are, there's a certain kind of texture and drama that moves it outside of what the kind of early European, you know, colonizing lens was doing. You know, it's mm -hmm. not about the stereotypical idyllic paradise. It's about dismantling uh, and a rupture of that, uh, of those notions, which I think is what uh, Christina is doing, you know, with her work, right? Mm -hmm. Although she's working in black and white, um, you know, the, the kind of grit of St. Thomas, the, you know, the, the um, Morant Bay, you know, all of those histories are kind of embedded in the work that she's, she's doing. Um, so I don't know if that answers the question. No, but... no, it, it, it's, it's great. I mean, I think what it does is it, is it brings it back to the attention. The, the fact that the stories that in the images in the Montgomery collection, and I'm not, I'm not assuming that this is true for all of them, but they are, if, if I'm understanding the way you've described it, they're, they're European, they're a European narrative, they're a European filtered, and, and I think what, um, and I, I think Janice's work does the same thing, and it, it brings back, it's a, it's a reclaiming of that story and a retelling of that story as the person who should be telling that story. Mm -hmm. You know, the the real love, Janice said, the, the real love images that you had, the, the, the it, that we showed in Jamaica that we're showing in this exhibition now. Um, I was talking to Karen about them the other day and she pointed out, you know, they're, they're images of uh, a black woman in, in a, a bucolic sort of scene in nature, which is not typically what, it, it relaxing, you know, and, and empowered in that, in that um, scene. And that's not, you know, if we look back at what you've just described as these early images of, of sort of working, mm -hmm. uh, there's a very big difference there. And I think that's a, a, an important thing to celebrate, I guess, that new, the reclaiming of that narrative. Yeah, I think it's about, um, and I think even in those images, there are moments of agency, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what Janice is doing. You know, there yeah. is, you know, trying to, and that's kind of the, the struggle when you're working with a body um, or a collection like that, you're always looking for the moment where you can um, hopefully um, reclaim that agency and subjectivity, um, which is what Janice is doing with her work. You know, so you have these great comparisons and juxtapositions of, of what does it mean to be a Caribbean photographer in control behind the lens, you know, taking the photograph as opposed to the colonizing lens, right? Yeah. And how yeah. those things can rub together. Um, and, and then, you know, you have someone like Van Lee, which you know, Marlene uh, so eloquently uh, described, you know, this other um, ability to um, place like the, the presence of the kind of diasporic community, you know, and mm -hmm. that kind of activation um, within a small community like Birmingham or Manchester, um, but there's a power uh, definitely uh, to those uh, photographs. So yeah, there's a, there's so much there's so much to, to talk yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I think the, the the biggest thing that's come out of this show for me personally was was a a, a shift in my focus. Uh, and Paul, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull you in right now. There's a there, and maybe this will relate, and maybe it won't. But there's a, there was a shift in my focus. Uh, I was suddenly introduced to work that that and and an artist and a whole uh, area of people that I, I just hadn't turned that way before. And now that I have, it's it's like a waterfall, or like a deluge of of amazingness. And um, it's it's so interesting to me that that 
I mean, they're, they're, you know, the art world has done these turns and shifts constantly. Um, and I'm wondering, Paul, if I know you and I had talked a little bit about um, that in, in some ways, and I, I don't know what your experience has been of this, um, of, of shifting views uh, and, and, and being made aware of new, of work that was always being made, you know, and, and artists that were always practicing, whether or not you were aware of them. Yeah, no, I, I've thought about that a lot. Um, uh, obviously, when we had that conversation a couple of days ago, but uh, but after we had that conversation, I realized that it's something that I've been thinking about um, a lot in the background of my own interests going back to my childhood. Because one of the mysterious questions for me as a, uh, a young white person growing up in uh, the United States when I first started to get interested in historical movements um, uh, with an African-American culture, and in particular, um, the civil rights movement in the United States. And then later, when I became interested in the photographer Gordon Parks, who's become uh, something of an obsession for me, one of the things that I always had to wrestle with was that there was very little access that I, that I had and very little information that I could find about the uh, to reference something that Janice said, um, this idea of home. Like, where is home base for somebody like Gordon Parks? Where is, where, what are the lines of influence? What are the, um, the historical traditions that, um, that photographers and artists, particularly within dispersed, um, generationally dispersed communities, diasporic communities, where are those lineages? Who's written about them? And one of the beautiful things about, you know, the Montgomery collection where Patrick Montgomery gathered all of this material together and he, he constructed a history by bringing all these pictures together. Uh, Julie is going to do an exhibition from that material and maybe a book, Julie, I don't know, maybe. Um, is that people are constantly in the progress uh, and have been now for, for decades and against a lot of odds and with very little resources and ver with very little attention uh, from institutions, people have been trying to reconstruct those lineages, those um, cultural and visionary lineages. And so for me, um, it's a real honor to be asked to be part of this group and um, to think about uh, not just what's in common uh, within say four artists using photography who have um, different experiences of the Caribbean and their present and their past lives, um, but also what's different and yet nevertheless tied together between say, um, you know, uh, uh, the, the mysteriousness that I see in Christina's pictures, the atmosphere, that rich atmosphere in Janice's pictures, um, the wonderful question in the middle of the narrative uh, in Storm's, um, in Storm's kind of uh, splices of cinematic narrative uh, and the history that Vanley shows, which uh, Vanley's work is probably the work I knew best, um, uh, you know, until say this year when I started to discover these other photographers through this exhibition and through another show at BAM. There's a lot of difference between this work, but there's also lineage that needs to be rebuilt between these different artists, um, whether it's common ancestors of, of um, of influence, of aesthetic and intellectual influence, whether it's um, the histories that they had to find independently, but that somehow connect. Uh, and I think that that for me is what's great about shows like this is that it helps people to do that. Um, although I haven't spoken to Greg or Karen about, about the basis for this uh, exhibition, um, for me, it's just valuable to try to bring Caribbean voices to Canada, which has a great deal of, um, of even within Canada, dispersed uh, diasporic communities. Um, because it helps people to see not just where they come from, but what they have in common with other people who come from these places. Um, so for me, that's what's really valuable. Um, that's aside from the fact that actually all four are really great artists. <laughs> so uh, that was nice too, to discover them and to continue my own education. Um, Thank you. Yeah, no, it, it's, it, it's, um, I think what you, you say about bringing the, the, just again, exposing and bringing those narratives out and, and having uh, a space to have the stories told is, is what's amazing. I, I, 
I'm, I want to ask all of the artists a question that's been on my mind and it may just come out of nowhere and I, I, but it comes, it comes out of the fact that I come to uh, my own art practice and the art world uh, as a queer man. And I, that, that, that sort of specific identity is something that I embody. And I, my question for a lot of artists, and I'm, I'm working on another project that's about queer artists in particular, but that, that identity becomes sometimes a, um, a matrix that is hard to escape or that is important to, like people come to it for different reasons and come at it at different reasons. And I think everybody here has talked about the, their uh, celebration of that narrative of that identity of the Caribbean identity. And in particular, in this case, I mean, all four artists are connected to Jamaica. Uh, so there's a whole, you know, there are other voices that aren't being, being seen here, but I'm wondering how much of that is conscious during your, your production of art, your, your Caribbean identity, um, and how much of it is just unconscious, how much of it's natural? Like, is it a, is it a burden to have to represent or is it a, uh, um, a privilege and a, a celebration? And I, I don't know if that's a fair question, but it, it, it's something that I uh, think about when I'm speaking to queer artists in particular, because it can, as soon as you're identified as a queer artist, you're identified, that becomes a label that sticks with you. Um, and I wondered if there is a, if there's some, if there's thought that goes around that uh, in the work that you're making. Um, and Storm, maybe, maybe I can sort of start with you. Sure. Um... I definitely find, especially because in my life, you know, I, I'm making work, but then I'm also um, with film, you know, pushing more and more into other markets. Every kind of step you take, you now I have, you know, I'm represented in Hollywood now. Now I'm like, you know, taking meetings about doing other projects now every Caribbean project that is like moving through certain places, I get a call about it. And it's this whole thing, okay, how much am I Mr. Caribbean, the, the authentic Caribbean voice and, and how much, and you know, but then reminding people, but yeah, I'm, I'll also direct other things. You know what I mean? I'm also, so as I think about it sometimes like that, like I am conscious, but for me, what I am very interested in, if I'm going to come up with something that is original, whether it's the work that is being shown, my photography work, my film work, if I'm going to write something, I am very interested in the Caribbean person's point of view on other things. So I'm interested in seeing Caribbean people in other spaces and how they interact and how they kind of take it in for me. Because, you know, I, and I'm interested in writing Caribbean voices into the telling of certain stories. Because I think a part of it does also being in Jamaica, which is a big tourism place. I grew up in a tourist town. I know that this is the vacation spot. If you don't know anything, you know that is, you know, the, the, the tourist slogan. You know, for me, um, so I'm very interested in like reversing that and being like, now nah, this is how we see everything else. This is how we see and look out. So I, I do feel like it's expected of me to have this Caribbean identity. I am interested in pushing it, but I do sometimes wonder if it can become its own box and I have to be conscious of that, especially in my film pursuits, which I think are, all con are connected to all the art I'm doing. It's all connected. Yeah. Right, right. Christina, is that is that similar for you? I know, I mean, your, your, your work is all the subject of your work is very specifically often the Caribbean um, community, but, but I don't know if that's, again, I don't know if it's a fair question to ask, but it feels, it feels it, appropriate. It feels. Yeah. I think it's, it's, it's interesting you talk about this because I think for me, well, one, I have to deal with the fact that I'm biracial. So there's that aspect of my identity in terms of my biraciality that sometimes comes through in my work, but then you have, you know, my, me resonating with my Jamaican heritage that comes through and then being Canadian on top of it. And I, I, I kind of want to, I'm thinking about this moment I had last, last uh, semester in school and pursuing my master's. And my teacher at the time had made this comment and I, I didn't know what to think of it, but now that we're having this discussion, she had said your work really displays Jamaicanicity and I thought that was really an odd comment to make for work that wasn't specifically about Jamaica. But 
because I had done work about that before, she had already placed that identifier on me, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And so I find that's a battle that I'm constantly dealing with as a visual artist is trying to f make work that doesn't just, and I hear what Storm's saying, like pigeonholes you into this one space. Like I look at artists like Cindy Sherman, she has a very niche kind of photography. Um, Sally Mann, very niche. And it's about being able to expand that and having narratives that yes, do connect to the Caribbean and, and the West Indies, but can you also tell a story through your photography that relates universally, universally, you know, and, um, and, and even just my newer work, it's, it's about uh, middle passage and this idea of what our identity was before the transatlantic slave trade and connecting to the spaces of, you know, the large Caribbean diaspora, but then also still connecting it back to people just being able to relate to your work. Um, uh, uh, yeah, again, uh, on a larger scale. And I, I think in particular about this series, um, I don't think you need to be from Jamaica to understand the idea of migration and leaving hometown and understanding the importance of even paying um, homage to your parents' place of origin and connecting back to that. I think we all, Canada being, you know, a country full of a first, maybe a lot of first generations and us understanding that we connect to those stories. So it's a balance. It's something I'm always conscious of identity, but trying not to constantly be in that place. I mean, obviously, I think as soon as you, you're an, a visible minority and artist, that's something that already has placed on you, even if you don't want to um, fully admit it, 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 it. It's already a lens in which I think people do see your work. Julie, Julie, I saw you um, reacting and shaking your head. Uh, it was... <laughs> You're on, you're on, you, yeah, there you go. Is, is that something, I mean, I know you, you've, you've dealt with a lot of artists in a lot of different contexts, but is that, is that a, what was that reaction? I know what that reaction was, it, but. It, it was to um, uh, Christina's Jamaicanicity. Never heard the term in my life, but um, <laughs> I, I, I can imagine Christina's reaction to that because I would have had the same reaction. I'm not sure what that, what that means and why. Um, you know, the, you know, it's also about, you know, the, the, the professors, you know, art schools, what, what, whatever, um, not having a, um, a more fulsome, rigorous understanding of, mm -hmm. you know, again, the complexities of um, who we are. Uh, in the diaspora or mm -hmm. even in the region. And so it's very easy to, um, it, it, it's kind of a, um, yeah, lazy way of thinking about uh, identity or one's practice or uh, a particular approach because you don't really want to do the homework. So you yeah. make up a word like Jamaicanicity and, <laughs> uh, you know, it, 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 it kind of stands in for, for everything. And that's, it's, it's quite, uh, so my reaction was one of irritation because yeah. um, I think, and I'm experiencing it too at times um, when I, you know, talk about Montgomery or a larger contemporary uh, Caribbean um, group of artists because they're, they are so different and they don't, mm -hmm want to, they're different in terms of their practices, they're different in terms of their mediums, they're, you know, actually think of someone like Frank Bowen, not a photographer, a painter, abstract painter, uh, who, you know, is working in, in London in, I guess, the 40s and, and 50s, um, and didn't want to be pigeonholed, wanted to be put next to his contemporary abstract expressionist painters. So, mm -hmm. though he was from Guyana and sometimes that those um, themes, memories uh, did kind of filter into the work, but um, he wasn't, that wasn't the sum total of who he was. Yeah. So I think that that's what, you know, Storm and, and Christina and Janice and, and, uh, and Van Lee would perhaps argue about, you know, in terms of this kind of um, wanting to put them in in a box, a very neat box. Mm -hmm. Janice, do you, how? Thank, thanks, 
question. Janice, um, is that is that it's your reaction to that question or, or experience with that? I mean, is that something you've had to deal with in the in your practice? Um, I think that um, you do struggle with it, right? Um, of course, you'll photograph um, what you know, um, what's surrounding you, what's around you. Um, just like, you know, when you ask the question, what crossed my mind was Toni Morrison, when people ask her, like, why don't you write about white people? Why is it always Black people the center of your stories? Well, with my work, right, because I am Black, and that that's why, like, I'm the center of my universe, so everyone else <laughs> will not, you know, but um, I will be the center, um, and the people that I will photograph is going to be the the reflection of me, of my center, right? Um, I do understand where Storm and where um, Christina comes from because you don't want to be pigeonholed. You don't want to be set in a box. Me personally, I don't like labels, um, right? But um, I do understand that labels are given for because people need to understand uh what they're viewing what they're seeing people need to take in that type of information so labels are important in that type of way but labels are not important in a way especially when it comes to you being a creative you can't hold on to labels you can't because you have to disregard them one day you might be i personally i'm a black artist obviously but i would like to expand in different ways I don't want and nor should it my blackness to pigeonhole me and stop me from going and doing certain projects, right? Um, you, number one, you should be um, attracted to my work because it's my work and how I am and how I photograph as a photographer, not because she is a black photographer, she is a black female photographer. I want my work to transcend that and not have, my, but I, do own and it does ground me, my ancestry, my my mother's um, land, you know, um, Jamaica, it does use a tool to ground me and for me to have an understanding of where I come from. Or because this talk has made me reminisce and think about like, I remember the first time we went to Jamaica was for Christmas. And it, she just, she didn't tell us where we were going. She just woke us up, we got on a plane, and we went to Redlands and she's like, this is where you're from, you know, it looks like you, right? Um, so I would say that it is something that we have to be careful of, but I don't want to say that it holds me back in any way. Perfect, thank you. And, and Bentley, I know you've been, I mean, you, you know, the, your intro is always the godfather of black British photography there's a that that label kind of follows you um and i'm wondering if that is something that you see as a limiting factor or something to celebrate or both um when i i, I first of all have to say marlene um the check is in the post <laughs> <laughs> and thank you very much um it, it, it's quite interesting what, what Marlene said and, and the question that, that, that we're responding to at the moment. You see, when I started taking photographs, I really didn't describe myself as a, as a documentary photographer or any other photographers. I just find the idea of labels and names quite tedious. And rather than spending time to argue with them, I just do the work. So if you say I'm a documentary photographer, I say, yes, I'm a documentary photographer. You know, if you say I'm uh, uh, in fact, I'm an artist now. I'm not a documentary photographer. I'm not even a photographer at all. But you see, I think we can spend too much time. If 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 you're to challenge in, if you're to be challenged in the status quo that is there, and you're bound by those boundaries, you know, how are you going to break out of them? And I think institutions such as art institutions, curators, and and other art institutions, galleries, and so on. You know, they, 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 and writers, they try to keep you in those boxes to frame you. And I think me personally, I'm, I'm desperately trying to break out of those frames. Um, I, I, I paint, as I say, I sculpt, and I, I don't even paint with material that is long lasting. I paint with whatever I have. You know, the need to paint is greater than the need to, for the painting to survive. You know, so you use whatever is available to you. The need to produce a photograph 
um, is equally important. And I remember when I started first, um, someone said to me, or a friend told me that his wife said, um, can't Vanity take any other photographs other than black people? And I thought about it, and I, uh, my conclusion is, why not? You know, why should I not concentrate? Have, where in history have we, well, I'm not, sorry, I'm getting a bit carried away with my own history there. Um, where, you know, we don't have the opportunity to spend a lifetime documenting your own, to work on your own, to reflect, you know, your own experiences um, and, and how it relates to a community that you, you, you know, you're engaged with. I don't think we should be embarrassed about any of those. And I think if the argument doesn't exist, if you like to analyze what we are doing at the moment, then it will be for future generations to do that. I think it's just that we are limited, so we, we box ourselves in or allow ourselves to be boxed in. But, you know, I, if you put me in the box, then I, you know, I feel somehow the box becomes a part of my art. I, I don't worry. And when, you know, the Jamaicanosity, I think was one of the words that was used. Again, I wouldn't even spend much time thinking about it. You know, it's not your problem. It's the person, it's the problem of the person who's prescribing it. And what it does, it gives you, if you like, something else to think about when you should be thinking about your work and what you're doing. You know, the only unfortunate thing there is that very person is going to be analyzing and reflecting and responding to the work that you, you do. And they will hold the, the red pen in their hand to say, well, it's a tick or an X, you know what I mean? Um, and somehow you need to get through that for the purpose of the, the, the qualification you seek. But beyond that, I don't think you need to be bounded by any borders, really. Amazing. I, I have to say that um, Christina and I um, have, a, you know, an even further link, um, other than just the, 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 the Jamaican photographer. You know, I'm from St. Thomas as well, but um, I'm from a little bit further up the hills. So I tend to, I consider myself in a sort of, a, I refer to it as a, um, a, a, a um, almost a superior position because I look down on everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> you know, up, when you're up in the hills, it's, 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 just, you, it's, just, it's just really roving hills. And I, I am in a flat here, I'm on the ninth floor, and that sense of superiority continues because I look down on everyone else. But I've never really been in it. Money or fame has never really been my criteria, so therefore what you call me isn't relevant. I think if you like I've been blinkered, and my blinkered is about how do I provide a service which best reflects my experience uh, and observation of the people who I um, grew up with in Jamaica, because while I was in Jamaica, I was fully formed. You know, I came here when I was 15, 14, 15. And how do I then reflect that experience of the, the journeys that these people make and the struggle, if you like to establish themselves in this very different land? If you try, if you imagine trying to, um, you know, grow sugar cane in your local park, you know, and I know you have good summers, but it wouldn't last. And somehow that's the struggle that we have here. It's how do you lift up this culturally different group of people and place them in this environment with all the hassles they have, um, you know, not least of all by the elements, but by the people that they encounter as well. Um, I'll, I'll open up uh, to, to Paul and Marlene in case there's anything, um, and, and Julie as well, if, if anybody has any Actually, everybody, if anybody has any sort of final things or things that we missed or things, something that pops up that we wanted to talk about. Um, I know we're getting close to the end of the talk, I think, so. Um, I, I just want to say, just, just um, responding to what the artists have said about the way that their work is caricatured at times, that I think it's, a, it's equally important that we have um, people interpreting and historicizing that work that have a, a sense of where the work is coming from. I think it, that is as important as the artists themselves. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important in terms of the encounter of that work from or by audiences. So, you know, I think that the curator's voice and the interpreters, 
interpretation of work is really important in terms of getting people across a threshold, whether that threshold is a physical or a psychological one. Um, and, I, and I also think it's important for the longevity of that work and for the generations that will come um, after us so that there is some sense of that history so that that work can be found so that it can be referenced um, mm. so so I so for me that's that's equally important as um, I mean it's great that, that people that there's a kind of variety of voices that are, that are making work but it's also important that we have that that kind of interpretation and and critique of the work that actually sees the work you know, I think that there's a lot of critique of black work, which just talks about, um, which talks about in, in, in a very kind of um, one dimensional, you know, Jamaicanicity. Wow. <laughs> you know, it's wow. Wow. That's all. Wow. New um, word of the day. Definitely. You know, that, 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 um, yeah, that doesn't, does not, is not open to the multi dimensionality of the work. Um, I think the, I do think the Caribbean is a really important um, geographical and psychic space in terms of thinking about modern art. You know, I will say that um, so much. You know, the the kind of trade winds and the crosswinds of uh, what that space is, has witnessed and brought forth is really important when we can when we when we come to reconsider the the art of the twentieth and twenty first century. The Caribbean has to be taken, we have to, we have to have a conversation with and through the Caribbean. And I, you know, I just don't think that, you know, Western modern art history uh, and historians are quite ready for it yet. But, you know, I live in hope. I, 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 I agree with you, really, because one of the questions I, I, I really keep asking myself is, who is it that allow us to speak? Um, and you know, I mean, I made an application to a, re a gallery in my in my area for an exhibition, and I went to them. I had a pitch, and you know, I I mean, I rarely do that because again, I I find that quite frustrating. You know, you get you know like the little hoops that you have to jump through. So I just wait for galleries to invite me, and if I like it, I I go along with it. Um, and up to now, I still haven't. That was last year, sometime early last year, if not early, and I I um. I still haven't heard from them, um, but I think that idea of working with curators that share your cultural sensitivities and experience, I think is excellent, uh, is, is a wonderful, you know, um, is, is a must really. Um, one example is um, I was invited by band uh, to put on an exhibition at, at their um, gallery in, in Toronto. Um, which was curated by Marlene, and um, you know we were deemed the most significant of the exhibition for that particular year. Now that all came about by the opportunity that was given, but I don't think, you know, if it wasn't for Karen who recognizes the quality of the work that I've been doing and invited Marlene, if you like, paired us together to put the show together and us working together knowing the subject, we wouldn't have had that opportunity. Instead, we would have had a show which reflect, if you like, an experience that something deemed is necessary to be done, but not necessarily as relevant to the situation as it is. It's more like giving giving him a break because we need to give, you know, some like guy some wall space um, in a gallery without really analyzing the material as you know as as I think we we did um, when we had this exhibition in Canada. Once again, thanks, Marlon. And Wonderful. Um, I think are we we're we're at the end of our uh, talk. I again, I just want to thank everybody for participating so much. It's it's this kind of conversation and dialogue that I know Karen uh, when the idea of Sea Art and and the whole uh, project that is Sea Art uh, came into her head. This is what this is what is needed, this is what is wanted, um, and this is what will continue. Uh, and I hope everybody here is is part of that continued conversation. Um, <clears throat> the exhibition uh, in PAMA is is up now until um, I think it's the end of the end of January. Uh, and I oh, there's a 
fingers are crossed that at some point we'll be able to see it in person and physically, but um, you know, our hope also is that it will move on to other venues. Um, we uh, do also, as, as was mentioned at the beginning of this uh, talk, there's a, there's a second talk um, with the remaining artists that will be held on January 28th. Uh, and you can sign up for that talk starting tomorrow, I believe. But again, thank you everybody for joining us from all over the place everybody who spoke and all of the artists. Um, it's amazing. And I'm, I'm uh, uh, just all constantly um, honored to be working with all of you. So thank you. And um, looking forward to seeing us all together in one place, hopefully Jamaica in um, 2022, if not before. Yeah. I'll send you my address for the tickets. <laughs> yes, please do. <laughs> thank you guys. Thanks again. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.